What up everyone, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing. I am a thyroid specialist and I teach people how to heal using food and food alone. Sounds crazy, but we do it. And that's why myself and my wife, we call ourselves thyroid specialists. Because as you know, there's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of different diets and a lot of people are typically recommending supplements, even medications, and a lot of people are still suffering. So we've developed a system to help people heal regulate adrenal health, thyroid health, gut health, etc. using metabolic foods. So today we're going to talk about hypothyroidism and weight loss. Now before we get into that, I want to share a couple things. Obviously, as you can see, my wife's not here. She hasn't been here. She's really sick. I miss her. You miss her. She is bummed. She can't be here again. So um, let's hopefully plan on next week. Um, so if you have any questions for her, Throughout the podcast or the Facebook Live, post them below, put Jeannie in front of it, and we'll definitely have her answer your question in the next 24 to 36 hours if she's feeling better, um, or even maybe on the next podcast. Um, first things first, I'm going to do this right now, it's just easier. Um, if you want to learn more about what we do in our approach, a lot of the things that I'm talking about today... Um, and you just want a little bit more of an in-depth explanation, what you can do is, I'm going to post a link right now in the comment section. You'll see it on the playback as well. You can go to a link called the Restoration Thyroid Audio Series, and it allows you to subscribe. It's um, free. There's no obligation. You're going to get a seven-part audio series on how to heal your metabolism, which is your adrenals and your thyroid with food. And it's seven parts, and um, we get a lot of great feedback on it. And also, and to be honest with you, uh, I think it's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna really kind of pat ourselves on the back for that one. Um, secondly, a lot of people that listen to us want to know how they can get in touch with us if they have questions or they want to um, maybe get a couple things they can kind of start with, or possibly interested in our work and working with us. So I'm going to put another link, and that's for a free 15-minute complimentary consult. Once again, there's no obligation. So I'll put that in the link, and you guys can access that um, if you want to get a hold of us. So today we're talking about hypothyroidism and weight loss. Now, of course, we are here every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific Coast time. So share that. Put it in your calendar. Um, last or this Monday, we talked about ketosis, the pros and cons. And last week, we talked about supplementation. So don't forget, if you go to the videos page of our Facebook page, um, there is a uh, folder for our Coffee Talk sessions. And you can see, you know, the current one as well as the past ones, of course, as we do more. As well as you can find it on our YouTube page. Because I'm uploading them to our YouTube page if you're a YouTuber. And that is East West Healing. So you can check those out in case you can't miss them. Um, and at the same time, you know, kind of asking up front, we'd love for you to share our work, share videos like this if you're watching it, uh, and share it. You know, obviously that helps us out, but of course it helps share our message because we know so many people are struggling. So once again, I would love to know where everyone's from. Um, if you're listening now or even on the playback, put it in the comment section, you know, where you're, where you're listening from. Um, and at the same time, if you have any questions, um, post them in the comments page. I'll definitely leave time at the end for questions if I have time. Um, if not, we will respond to them within the next 24 to 36 hours. So without further ado, let's talk about um hypothyroidism and weight loss now of course this is a big topic why because i don't care have if someone's colon is falling out they have cancer they have hypothyroidism um they have a serious disease whatever it is everyone wants to lose weight right and there's so many diets out there we have paleo we have keto we have counting your macros if it fits your macros I mean, there's so many diets, gaps, all these things that are specialized really to help the body, but at the same time help us lose weight. And we always say this. Well, we don't say it. It's, it's a quote from Diana Schwartzbein, and it is, you have to get healthy to lose weight, not lose weight to get healthy. And that's the truth. And, and the, the problem is that's hard for people because everyone defines health by how skinny we are. 
right? Everyone thinks that if the, I'm skinnier and I work out more and I eat less, that means I'm going to be healthy. But I'll be honest with you. I've been in this industry itself as a whole for about 18 years. And I have never come across, I'm sorry, I have come across more people that are underweight and undernourished and don't feel well than more that are overweight and undernourished don't, that don't feel well, right? So skinny is not just health. It's not a criteria for being healthy because 99% of the people that are too skinny are hypothyroidism, they don't know it. They're hypoadrenic and they don't know it, right? Um, they have nutrient deficiencies and they don't know it. And the problem is they've created this illusion that skinny is healthy. So almost in a sense, they ignore the symptoms. They ignore their fertility issues or I haven't had my cycle in a year and I'm 25 years old. They ignore the sleep issues and they just take Benadryl or sleep medications, right? Or they smoke weed. So we ignore these things. Like why do I have anxiety? Well, it's because when I was five, this happened with my family. Well, maybe that is a part, right? Maybe that's a part, but what if it's how you're eating? What if it's because your brain needs glucose for energy and your cells need glucose for energy? When they don't get those cells, you release hormones and those hormones create anxiety, which creates hyperventilation, which causes an anxiety attack. So we have to look at all these things and say, what am I doing? How am I living my life? And maybe everything I'm doing is creating my hypothyroidism and ability to lose weight because your ability to lose weight 99% of the time has to do with metabolic health, has to do with your thyroid. And when we think about it, hypothyroidism in itself is an inflammatory condition. From the cell level all the way up to the superficial level, it's inflammatory. So we have to really alter our lifestyle and how we're living. We have to alter how we're breathing, how we're eating, etc. In order to create that change and create a, a, um, a stage for health, vitality, and maybe weight loss in the end. At the same time, if we lead a life that's crazy, we work out all the time, we overtrain, which is so common, we overwork, we're living in this excited environment, we're always on a computer, we're always on our phone, we're always on our iPad, we're always watching TV, you know, we don't get outside enough, we don't take me time, we're always with the kids, we're going crazy, and it just keeps going, right? That creates hypothyroidism, which creates a weight loss issue. So it can go both ways. Right? But the bottom line is, if we don't get our metabolism working, if we don't get that fire burning, if we don't get that furnace to produce heat, we will not lose weight. The body is going to hold on to what it, basically everything it can to preserve energy. Because when we are in a hypothyroid state, when we're in a sympathetic state, it doesn't matter. What the body does is then it'll simplify it. What's up, Adam? The body breaks down itself to feed you. It breaks down tissue, right? It breaks down everything to feed you. It demineralizes bone. And this is a problem because this is, this is catabolism, right? And this is why people initially, when they go on a diet, they feel good because they're hyperadrenaline. They lose weight because they've cut calories and they're hyperadrenaline. They're breaking down their body and they feel awesome. Life is great. This diet is awesome. Call me in a month or a year, 99% of their time, they're tired, they have no energy, they feel flabby, they have horrible cramps or no cycle, etc. right? So we can't sacrifice kind of the, the short-term gain for long-term health. We can't do that. Um, well, we can do that, but you will sacrifice long-term health. It's that simple. And that's why we say, you know, when people get older, they get sicker. Well, they get sicker because as a society, we're sacrificing short-term gains for long-term health. So let's talk about some of the problems as I say it. Um, sorry. Some of the problems when it comes to hypothyroidism and what people are doing to lose weight. And this doesn't even go for hypothyroidism. This goes for everyone because most people are hypometabolic. Um, in 18 years, I probably worked with five people who are truly uh, hypothyroid, meaning they have a thyroid issue. 99% of the time, people have the illusion of a thyroid issue, but it's a conversion issue, a cell issue, etc. So they don't have hypothyroidism. They have functional hypothyroidism. And we like using the term hypometabolic because I don't like the word hypothyroidism. So the problem is people, um, 
think that weight loss is all about counting calories, right? That's the main thing. Do this to lose weight, you're going to get healthy, right? Um, the problem is what we're doing is, if you think about it, we're creating a self-induced hypothyroidism. We're pushing our body into a sympathetic state. We're pushing our body into a, a feast or famine state. We're pushing our body kind of into a stressed physiological state. What happens? We break down us to feed us. That's catabolic. We release hormones, adrenaline, cortisol. Uh, cortisol affects thyroid hormone conversion. So now we have, end up with low T3. We have low energy, fatigue, all the symptoms that everyone feels. We inhibit thyroid hormone production. Um, and that's a problem, right? So when we cut these calories, we're creating issues at the thyroid level and we're creating deficiencies everywhere else. We need these foods. We need the foods that most people are cutting, right? Because what are people cutting? Oh, people are cutting out carbohydrates. And anytime you cut out carbohydrates, you are going to create some type of thyroid issue, right? I've always said no sugar, no thyroid, right? That doesn't mean I'm sitting here telling you to eat candy bars and white sugar. I'm just saying from a fruit and roots perspective, no sugar, no thyroid because it's physiology. Your liver stores glycogen. It uses that glycogen not because it just wants to store glycogen. It uses it to convert a lot of thyroid hormone in the liver, meaning inactive T4 to active T3. So you can use that in your cell to produce energy to create a healing environment. Right? So we need this glucose for the thyroid, for the conversion, for the liver, for developing fetus, for the central nervous system. It provides us energy, calmness, etc. And I talked about the anxiety connection, right? So we need these things. Um, and initially, you probably will lose weight when you cut out carbs. You will lose weight. You're cutting calories, right? You're cutting sugars. So that initial weight loss is because of that. But over time, what you're doing is you're damaging your liver because you're preventing the storage of glycogen. You're preventing the conversion of thyroid hormones, and you're leading yourself into a hypometabolic state, meaning you're creating the illusion of hypothyroidism. And that just leads to a crazy rabbit hole, because what happens 99% of the time? You end up going on thyroid medication, someone told you to, and you're just doing the best you can, and you do it, and you get worse. Why? Because you didn't need it. And then it's two, three, four, five, twenty 20 years of battling this when in the first place, all you needed to do was eat the right food and create balance to create balance in your autonomic nervous system and at the physiological level. Now that kind of comes, comes into like just the term restrictive diets. Most people are just restricting foods. That's the biggest thing. If you look at any diet, don't do this, don't do that, don't eat this, don't do that. Right? That's not our philosophy. It might sound like it, but it's really not. Our goal is to help you create balance within your life, with everything you're doing. We don't have this cookie cutter diet and we say, eat this. Everyone's the same. No, it's about saying, here's the philosophy. Let's make it work for you in your life and paint the picture that you want and how you want health to look, right? So people say, well, uh, educate them about veggies. Well, I still wanna eat them. Okay, let's, let's how do we create balance to make it work for you, right? Or I want to have these foods. How do we create balance? So for us, it's not always about just don't and cut out, right? That's very restrictive and emotionally it creates a lot of fear, right? We want to help people move forward and not move backwards and keep them locked in a box. So when we go on these restrictive diets, you know, besides just cutting out carbs, there's a million and one of these, we lose a lot of nutrients over time. And what happens with this is we push our body into a state of famine. We're kind of mimicking the, the kind of like state when we're not getting enough nutrition, of course, because we're creating a deficiency. The problem with this is we create a lot of vitamin deficiencies, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and our body, to make sure that we go, go deeper into this kind of hypometabolic state that we're already in, or the starvation mode, it wants to protect us. So it's gonna hold on to everything it can. It's gonna hold on to energy. It's gonna hold on to weight. It's gonna hold on to enter everything to help preserve us because your body will use that fat for energy. It's not efficient, it's catabolic. It's not what's supposed to happen, right? So we don't wanna be in that place. 
So when we create these deficiencies and we don't get the, the, the right metabolic foods, right, we're not getting vitamin A, right? We need vitamin A to, 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 to really, um, it, in a sense, anti-estrogenic. Let's leave it at that. We're not getting things like selenium and magnesium to help upregulate up um, cellular energy production. We're not able to absorb B12, Right, so there's a lot of things that happen when we go on these restrictor diets, and we start cutting out a lot of different carbs, or we cut calories, or we even go on these crazy diets where people say, you know what, eating donuts and pizzas okay as long as you meet your macros. I have no words. I have no words. I'm sorry. I don't get it. I'm okay for people eating foods and eating donuts or whatever when they want them. Well, I shouldn't say that because my philosophy is this. If you want to get healthy, you're going to do anything you can to get healthy. That's my philosophy, right? You will do anything. And as Tom Brady says, because he is the best quarterback of all time, when you say yes to something, you have to say no to something else. So when you say yes to healing, and yes, I'm a Patriots fan. Go Patriots all the way. Love it. I'm pumped. So when you say yes to getting healthy, you kind of have to say no to something else and change your habits, right? You have to change things in your life to heal. So moving forward, when we gain weight, it's a th sign of a thyroid issue, right? It's not a sign of just like, I'm gaining weight. It's an inflammatory response. That's why we gain weight. It's a protective response. And at the same time, it's not... I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's not an exercise deficiency, meaning it doesn't mean you should exercise more. Because a lot of the times when people are in this hypothyroid state, the problem is they overtrain, which pushes them deeper, deeper, and deeper, which I'll talk about and give you some tips. So when we have this weight gain, what's really happening, I'll break it down for you. And this is what causes our inability to lose weight. We can't convert thyroid hormone, and we need thyroid hormone to be used in our cells, right? In the mitochondria, let's get technical. But you have cells in all your tissues, your, it, like your skin, your organs, everything. They run the system. They're the conductors. When we're not producing energy, we produce lactic acid. Lactic acid is inflammatory, right? It creates the process of going down the path to disease, inflammation, you know, disorders, symptoms, etc. But when we produce energy, we're in a pro-metabolic state. So when we're in a pro-metabolic state, what's happening? We're producing more mitochondria, we're converting more thyroid hormone, we are metabolic. And over time, we produce more brown fat. Brown fat is metabolic. It burns energy, right? And it eats white fat. White fat conserves energy and it just sits there, like on your hips, on your belly. So we want our cells to be producing energy. We want to be converting thyroid on. Because what we're doing is we're putting, putting our body in such a pro-thyroid state that we produce so much more brown fat. We become kind of, in a sense, who we want to be like when we were like 18 years old. We could eat anything and we wouldn't gain weight. That's brown fat. But as we get older, we get more white fat because of how we're eating and living in chaos, right? And we want to get rid of that white fat. Yes, you can cut calories and, and eat all your muscle away. Do it. That's exactly what's happening. But you're doing it at the expense of damaging your metabolism. So if we eat in a way to produce brown fat and produce more thyroid, right, and, which allows us to produce more brown fat, the same thing is happening when we use, like, cold therapy. It's the same thing. Um, we end up eating white fat, so we're getting healthy to lose weight, and that's kind of our philosophy or the science of it. So when we're not, when we're hypometabolic and we can't lose weight, it's because of what's going on at the physiological level. Our body is holding on to it because we're in an inflammatory state. We're not producing the right hormones, the cells are not working properly in order for us to create balance to let go of that fat or get eaten by brown fat. It's a protective mechanism. The problem is most people go, well, I'm going to cut more calories. I'm going to cut more carbs. I'm going to exercise more, but this suppresses your thyroid more. This creates more stress hormones. It might cause you to lose weight initially because it's catabolic, but over time you're going to get, gain even more weight. And this is the yo-yo diet that everyone has a problem with, right? So hopefully up to this point it makes sense. If you have any questions, definitely post them. Um, 
Ah, uh, for some reason, the other day... Oh, there we go. I'm seeing some qu some questions. I couldn't see the questions the other day. Um, but now I can see them. Someone was, just, someone just posted a question just to make sure I can see the questions. Just say something like, hi, or whatever. Adam, someone, Kate, Chris... So if you think about it, it's, it's complex, but it's really not complex. What we're doing is creating the hypometabolic state and how we're living and what we continue to do, just keep perpetuating that process, right? Good, I can see the questions. Um, so it's a state of our physiology that's, that's holding on to this energy that's not allowing us to lose weight. We keep cutting calories, we keep exercising more you're going to keep breaking down muscle and not getting rid of fat. And then when you start, stop exercising or you uh, start eating normal again, what happens? You gain more weight, right? And you damage your metabolism even more. So next time you try to diet, you're like, I can't lose weight like last time. It's, it's harder. I have to work harder or it's not happening because your metabolism gets damaged each time and it's going to take longer and longer to heal your metabolism, right? So what are some of the things we can do? And if you are going through this, I would love for people to share what are some of your struggles. Like what you understand, what you don't understand. What are you going through? And like, what are your experiences? Or what has worked for you as you go through this process? Um, before I go on to the solution, someone has a question. Does white fat and water in the cells go hand in hand? Uh, to not get super technical, but yeah. Your cells kind of take up certain minerals and water and they get inflamed um, and they don't produce energy. So, yeah, definitely. Um, Rachel had a question. What are the, some of the signs of healing? I think that's all individual because I think as we heal, I, you know, I've always said that when we heal, we get closer to self, right? Meaning we start to act like ourselves. We think from ourselves. We can feel ourselves, right? So when we're, in, when we're in this chaotic state, a lot of the times we can't feel what's going on. We can't even sense what's going on, right? So a lot of the times it's hard to tune in. I mean, we always tell, we want to teach people awareness to this process so they can feel and understand when they're healing. At the same time, we use our food logs, which I know a lot of people dislike, but it's a feedback mechanism, right? It's a feedback mechanism to show you patterns over time to show you the progress you're making because you can't tune into it. I'm not making progress. Well, look at your patterns. You used to eat one meal. Now you're eating six. Your pulses used to be high. Now they're normal. Your temps used to be low. Now they're normal. So we use that as a feedback mechanism. You used to always talk about being gassy and having skin issues. You don't have those anymore. People go, oh yeah, you're right. They forget about it because no matter what, everyone wants to lose weight. And they forget about all the important things that are going on. And it just goes, they just forget about it. So looking at those things and getting that feedback is important. Using body temperature and pulse. A lot of the times for me, it's, you know, sleep quality. If people can go to sleep, stay asleep and wake up and feel rested, that's a great sign of healing. Your, resi your kind of resiliency towards life, resiliency towards movement that kind of shows us where we're going in regards to healing. But I'll be honest with you, my friends. If you are hypometabolic and you're trying to lose weight and get healthy, it does not happen overnight. We're not the type of people that are going to say, yeah, in a month, let's do it. Let's do a 24-day program and you're going to heal just to get your money. That's not who we are. We shoot straight from the hip. We are transparent. We are 100% honest. We're realists. This takes time. Right, you're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. It takes time to unwind what's going on physiologically, what's going on neurologically with the autonomic nervous system, and your habits that you've created. Because those habits and changing those habits are what's going to change the stress in the autonomic nervous system, your physiology, and the energy you're producing. Right? Because those things are what affect thyroid hormone. So it doesn't happen overnight. Everyone wants it to. 
Our goal is to teach you a way of eating and living and a philosophy so that you can continue and use a sustainable way of eating in your life as you age, have you have more stresses, when you exercise more, as you heal, have a baby, etc. So you can adapt to where you are in life to support your body to increase your resiliency. It's not to throw you in a box, cut your calories, have you lose weight and say, you're healthy, but physiologically you're really not. You look skinny, but that doesn't mean you're healthy physiologically, right? So it takes time. So just embrace the process. Right? Embrace the process. And it's hard because you have to change your mindset. And really, honestly, in a sense, get vulnerable and say, you know what? I love who I am. I'm going to stop comparing myself to everyone else and say, I am who I am and I love who I am. And I'll be honest with you, when you can do that type of stuff, nothing else matters. Right? And when you let go, when you begin to let go, major things happen. Major, major, major things happen, right? So just let go. Let go of the weight gain, weight loss. Just let it go. Don't even think about it. Focus on what can I do today? What can I eat today? How can I live my life today? What can I do for me time? What hobbies can I do? What can I do for me? How can I live my life so it's not so stressful today, right? To create long-term health because that's what we're focusing on. And it takes time. So just embrace it. One more question before I go into some solutions. I occasionally work with healthy 21-year-old females who like to work out and run and eat clean, right? It's a big term these days. She hasn't had her period in about 10 months, always cold, hand and feet, low energy. And she's 21. This is a problem. We see this all the time. So if you think about it, all disease and disorders come from the stress response in the system, Right? Stress response, cortisol affects thyroid hormone. And over time, in a sense, we can shut down the system and it can lead to amenorrhea, dysmenorrhea, etc. Right? So the easy way to explain this is when you are in survival mode for so long, which is sympathetic state, you weaken the parasympathetic state so much that it can't even come in and is not even part of the equation. You are sympathetic dominant. And when, in a sense, if, in a, what textbooks call this is, is fight or flight. You're running from a lion. If you're running from a lion, all energy is diverted to run from a lion. Physiologically. So you could be at rest, but it's almost like you are running a marathon every day. Right? You don't even know it. You're hyperventilating. You're blowing off CO2. You have a low body temperature and a high pulse. You have a rapid heart rate, whatever it may be. You're sweating. The end, end, end of that is like, I don't sweat, right? Your body's just like <clears throat> depleted. So what happens is when you're running from a lion, are you thinking about pooping? No, constipation. Are you thinking about eating food? No, lack of appetite. Are you thinking about procreating? No, low libido, no cycle, right? Cycle is a part of procreation. So when you see people in that state, you have to think lifestyle. What are they doing? How are they living? How are they thinking? How are they eating? How are they breathing? Now, of course, initially, most people are going to go, I'm going to change my work and I'm going to change how I live. That's why food and breathing are the easiest ways to tap into the autonomic nervous system, get the ball rolling to create some shifts. Then they start to see that change and they're much more willing to create new habits in their life, etc. But unfortunately, the children of today because of social media and because of e-cigs and all this stuff, you know, they use all this stuff. They look online. They don't want to be overweight, right? So they, they go on a crazy diet or they don't eat. They smoke cigarettes so they don't eat to curb their appetite. And they affect many systems, including their cycle. So we got to think stress when it comes down to that. So... When we are hypothyroid and we want to lose weight, what's the solution? Well, it's not an easy solution. It takes time. So the first recommendation I always say is this. And this is in no particular order, I guess. It's just kind of random thoughts. And if you have any thoughts on what's worked for you or something that you're doing that, is, that you might want to share with everyone else, please post in the comments below whether you're watching now or on the feedback. First is if you haven't, because I know a lot of people are a bit crazy with labs. Um, 
but a lot of the times they're doing the wrong labs. You want to go get labs done to see where you're at. That's the most important thing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say we recommend labs. Um, because 99% of the time people come to work with us, they've done way too many labs, but unfortunately they do the wrong labs, right? They do TSH alone and they say they have hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, etc. You need to go get a full thyroid panel, right? You need to go get T4, T3, free T4, free T3, TSH, antibodies, cholesterol panel, um, prolactin, parathyroid hormone, um, ferritin can add a full CBC in there. Um, it's really important to see where you're at. At the same time, don't just diagnose based off that. Well, if you're a doc, you're a gunno, but if you're, a, you know, like me, we can't. But it's important to see where you're at, right? To know your baseline. Because I've seen a lot of people diagnosed with hypothyroidism just off TSH. As I've said before, that's like going into to Jiffy Lube or whatever and getting your oil changed and I'm saying you, you need a whole set of new tires. Makes no sense. Has nothing to do with the tires. So TSH alone is useless. Completely useless as a lab test. You need to look at all these other values. And I can say this with 100% honesty and I've said it, most people have functional hypothyroidism. We have things like excess cortisol. Mercury, which is rare, but still heavy metals. I've seen it with iron, high iron, high ferritin. Um, estrogen recirculation, mineral deficiencies, like I talked about. Chemotherapy, smoking, goitrogens, like cruciferous vegetables. Um, diabetes, people that fast. Low progesterone, the overindulgence in soy, overtaking iodine and there's more, all these things affect thyroid values. So you can't just look at the lab, you have to look at everything that's else that's going on in the lifestyle and say, what are my roadblocks? You can't just go, I have a thyroid issue, I'm gonna lose late, I'm gonna look at my diet. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with, right, and I understand the complications with this, or I should say the, the how hard it is, that smoke and they wanna heal their thyroid. It's a roadblock. You can't have these roadblocks in your life and get healthy. I'm sorry. When you say yes to something, you have to say no to something else. Tom Brady. Um, because what is this is going to lead to is if you on a, if you are on a thyroid medication, number two, you need to reevaluate your thyroid medications. And I say this because over the years, we have worked with so many people that don't need their medication. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you based on what I see. They're on the wrong dosage or the wrong type. 99% of the time, it's either they're on it and they don't need it. I see this all the time. All the time, right? Which can create a thyroid resistance in the cell. The cell says, I don't, I don't want any more thyroid. Now, we have all this circulating thyroid going on and they have sweats their hair falls out, they have rapid heart rate, they get weight loss, they get anxiety, on and on and on. They don't need it. What they need to do is create a foundation with food and slowly pull away the medication and they find, they'll, they'll find it works, but it takes time. Secondly, the most common prescribed is T4, which in itself is useless. Bottom line, it's useless. Just because you have low T3 doesn't mean you need T4, right? So Synthroid alone, a lot of the times will create more reverse T3, which binds up T3 receptor cells, right? So now, it doesn't matter how we eat, we're gonna really affect our body's ability to kind of rev the engine and produce energy. Um, so you need to reevaluate what you're on and definitely talk to your doctor. Don't talk to me, don't talk to a spe anyone else. Talk to your doctor because it's illegal for us to do this. I know I can talk based on experience of what I see of working with clients. But you definitely wanna talk to your doctor or whoever prescribed those medications and say, Am I on this? Am I taking the right medication? And I've been on it five years. Should I still be on it? Because my answer would be no. I feel if someone truly even has hypothyroidism, that you, if you use a thyroid medication along with food, you'll see in a, in a, a span of time that will, they'll be able to actually titrate off it. 99% of the time, people need a mix of T4 and T3, like Nature Thyroid, Armor, etc. 
that usually works best for people because the T3 helps to rev the engine. But if you don't have that nutritional foundation, it can actually make things worse, stimulate cortisol, and give you those symptoms that you don't want. So we always believe food first. Create that foundation and then use things to help support that foundation. So number two is just reevaluate the medication you're on because some of those medications could be contributing to your weight gain, your thyroid issues, but other medications like SSRIs, antidepressants, etc., can cause weight gain. So definitely reevaluate reevaluate your medications. Um, the third would be eat sugar, which means fruits and roots. This is the only way, right? And this means that your meals need to have a fruit or root with a protein and a fat, right? This is what most people are cutting out. And this is why most people have thyroid issues. This is going to take the burden off your adrenals, support the parasympathetic nervous system. It's going to reteach your liver to store glycogen, which is huge to get you out of this hypometabolic hypothyroid state to allow you to lose weight in the future and be healthy. And it's going to help increase the conversion of thyroid hormone so your cells can use it to produce energy to create this healing environment. So before I go further, we have a question from Faileen. When you've been on thyroid medication for 30 years, it's difficult not to trust your doctor who is telling you this. Yeah, it is. It just comes down to it's hard because you have to look at your doctor that has told you to be on it for 30 years when maybe you didn't really need it for 30 years. And a lot of the times they don't want you to go off it for liability issues. And you have to look at who you are as a person because some people really believe in the medical system and some people don't, like me, right? I don't have a trust in the medical system like a lot of other people do, right, for personal reasons. So I don't do everything they tell me to do. I take my health into my own hands. So sometimes you have to make that choice. Say, what do I believe in? What do I want to do? And also, how is that medication serving me right now? How is that working for me? And how has it not worked for me the past 30 years? You have to ask yourself those questions and come to your own conclusions. Because just because your doctor tells you to take that medication doesn't mean you have to take it. I know that's big, but you it's your choice. Now, I'm not thinking about talking about like other things, but like like big, maybe like a cancer medication or an autoimmune medication, but like this... It's important to say, do I really want to take this? And that's something you have to um, kind of sit down and think about. Journal about it. You know, sit down with it. Talk to a health practitioner. So the third recommendation would be to eat high quality proteins. The best to help with these deficiencies that I was talking about to help upregulate thyroid health. These are the best you want to gravitate towards would be like... Uh, homemade bone broth and gelatin or collagen a white fish any type of white fish and shellfish dairy eggs and liver why because of what they contain a lot of prothyroid qualities a lot of progesterone qualities and they contain a lot of minerals to help thyroid to help cellular energy production to create that platform for healing just like i talked about with deficiencies in the beginning Secondly, you're eating these proteins because of what they don't contain. They don't contain inflammatory amino acids. Now, I'm not saying muscle meats are bad, like lamb, venison, buffalo, chicken, etc. I'm saying in excess, they can be a detriment to thyroid health. So what I tell people is this. You can still have them. But if you're really in the bucket, every time you have them, I'd say have no more than like four to five ounces, depending on who you are. And have some collagen with it or have some broth with it. Maybe you have um, some chicken and you have a vegetable stir fry because you're starting out in some potatoes. You throw some gelatin in the stir fry. Let's say you are um, having a four ounces of steak, cup of broth, and you know some you know squash and roots on the side. That's great. So what we're doing is we're creating balance now with the amino acids that are going into the blood, and we're creating environment so we don't induce that stress reaction. Okay, so we want good quality proteins. Same thing. The fifth is good quality fats that are very supported to reduce inflammation and support blood sugar regulation. And those are things like coconut oil, ghee, butter, and olive oil, right? Our main thing is eliminate or I shouldn't say eliminate is to downregulate the amount of unsaturated fats because those are antithyroid and those are in like, 
you know, small amounts in vegetables, but especially nuts and seed and nut and seed oils. Those are anti-thyroid foods. So using saturated fats, like I mentioned, are very pro-thyroid. Last would be movement because a lot of people over train. So think about this. You know, initially we have to find the right type of movement because we all should move. We're human. You know, I think initially for some people that movement isn't the answer. Maybe they don't need to move. Maybe they need to stretch at night. Maybe they need to do some breathing exercises throughout the day and focus on their food. Right? It's all person dependent. But as we heal, maybe we need to add in the right type of exercise to meet our needs. And sometimes we don't know. Because sometimes we think we can handle something, but we really can't physiologically. So the best thing that you can do is this. Take your pulse and temp 30 to 45 minutes after doing exercise. It'll tell you if it's working or not for your body. If your pulse is 97.8 to 98.6, it's normal. If your temperature is above 85, that's hyperadrenaline. We want it below 85. So if after you exercise, your, your temperature is normal and your pulse is high, you're in a hyperadrenaline state, it didn't work for you. If your temperature is low and your pulse is high, it didn't work for you. So it's feedback, the body never lies. The second thing is this, when you're trying to heal and you're exercising, always breathe through your nose. Yes, you're on the treadmill, breathe through your nose. You're working out, breathe through your nose. Why? Number one, it's gonna pull you back a notch that much more. It's gonna allow you to bring oxygen into the system to bring it to your cells to produce energy. It's gonna allow you to not blow off CO2 to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. And it's gonna allow you not to dip into the sympathetic state because anytime we mouth breathe, we are going into a different energy system, which is a sympathetic state, which does not support thyroid health or weight loss, right? That helps us gain weight. And lastly, when you work out, Afterwards, you should not feel exhausted. You should feel energized and say, this is working for me within my healing journey and matching everything I need right now. It's a piece to my puzzle. It's not kicking my ass and taking my name. And I'm falling to the floor and going, I can't move. You know, that's not supportive to health, healing, and weight loss. So as I say, less is more sometimes. So hopefully this video helps you. Of course, there's a lot more. Um... We could sit on here for hours, but listen back at this. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section. Um, we'll definitely get to them. I'll open it up for maybe a couple minutes, take a couple questions, but um, this went a little bit longer than it was supposed to be, and I gotta get to a client. So does anyone have any questions before I wrap this up? No? I, there was questions before, but on the other one, and I couldn't see them, and I saw a ton afterwards. But maybe that's just how I'm going to have to do it. No, maybe not. All right. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh. Sorry, guys. Question from Mike. Oh, Mike Solanka. What do you think about the methods of Tom Brady teaches? I don't know a ton about it, to be honest with you. Um, all I know is I love Tom Brady. Um, but it's something I want to look into, so I can't really comment on it. Um, I know his diet. Not 100% agreeant with it. Um, and then you're going to say, well, it's Tom Brady. Obviously, it works. Tom Brady is like Michael Jordan, etc. They're phenoms. He could probably eat poop, and he'd probably still be Tom Brady, okay? That's why he is the best, will be the best quarterback of all time. I said it here. Write it down. Another question. Could someone have normal tempo pulse and be overweight? 100%. Tempo pulse are not an indicator of health. It's an indicator that you're producing energy. That's it. It means you're moving in the right direction. You have a little bit more resiliency than you realize, right? Um, so it's a good thing. It just means you need to, your body's not under as much stress as, as you think it is. Um, and you, but you're moving in that, that direction, obviously, because you are gaining weight, you know? Um, but if you give your body what it needs, you will lose the weight um, pretty easily over time. 
What about testosterone levels in women that are low? That's all stress related. Women do not need to take testosterone. 100%. All it will do is help you with your libido. But they do not to take, need to take testosterone. The reason testosterone goes down in women, it's stress induced. Estrogen goes up, testosterone goes down. So cortisol and testosterone have an inverse relationship. Cortisol goes up, testosterone goes down. So they're living in a stress state. How you work, how you live, how you train, everything, and what you're not eating. So those are the things you need to look out, look at, and when you take the burden off the adrenals, testosterone will come up in women. Yeah, I agree, Mike. It definitely misses the mark with the diet, TB12. Um, not 100% into it, but um, you know, to each their own. I'm not sitting here saying you have to do what I'm talking about. I'm just telling you based on physiology and how the body works, and what we do, it works. Um, does it take one day and one consult? No. Does it take one consult and missing five consults? No. And it doesn't mean it's going to happen if you work with us. You have to change. You have to create new habits. And that's the hardest thing for people to do. So I appreciate every single person watching this. Um, I really appreciate people taking the time, whether you're watching it now or in the playback. If you have any other questions, please post them in the comment below we will get to them in the next day or two um and um you will see my wife on here next week 100 percent. so thank you my friends don't forget to download your restoration thyroid series that's in the comment don't forget to sign up for your free consult we will see you here we will see you here next monday at 12 p.m pacific coast time i'm out